scary stories to tell in the dark. Oh. So we finally have a trailer for scary stories to tell in the dark. Besides the Super Bowl promos that they slap together with some crazy visual imagery, but I'm really excited to finally get to see more in context, in a trailer context, I guess. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this movie, or slash like anthology stories, uh, to come to life on the big screen because I remember reading this book when I was a kid and it, it, it was... It wasn't scary so much as it was interesting. Like, I always kept, like, coming back and reading the stories because, I don't know, I always, when I was a kid, I wanted to get scared. It was weird. <laughs> Go figure. Yeah. I think yeah. we all did. Well, absolutely. That's why I love reading Goosebumps and seeing this adaption right. into a movie is exciting. I just wanted to see how they're going to translate some of that amazing artwork into visual imagery, which we saw kind of hints of in those promos from the Super Bowl. So let's take a look at the first trailer for Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. Now. This town has told stories about me. Horrible stories. But they don't realize. See him like a clown outfit? That's right. Yeah. Sarah Bellows. Tell me a story. Somewhere oh. over the rainbow. Sarah Bellows' book. And the stories write themselves and it all comes alive. You don't read Big the toe. book. Yeah. The book reads you. Just like Soviet Russia. I'm afraid I'm gonna die, Dad. Oh. Is that Hank? Yeah. Dean Norris? We're next. We're next. Dr. Pimple Popper on that <laughs> one. <laughs> oh my gosh. Damn! It will be scary. It's all scary. Okay, uh, visual imagery of the town itself kind of reminded me a little bit of it. Uh, just, you know, that everything's so wholesome and nice, but scary things are afoot underneath the surface. That's what happens. It also kind of reminds me of, like, what the, the town from Silent Hill Probably sure. was before it got all like destroyed right. and gritty and stuff. So that that's it reminds me of that as well. I like how it's setting it up. It's it's a book already, and it's being told by or read out by all these kids and stuff instead of it being chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. It's like taking the Necronomicon and Goosebumps and putting them together. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because that's what that reminded me of when she's like read the book, except uh, you don't read the book, the book reads you. you must Kirk, not Kirk read Lazarus. from the book. Yeah. Uh, obviously, <laughs> no, nothing bad has ever come from, no harm has ever come from reading a book. And nothing good has ever taken place in a cornfield, Adam Scott. Uh, which, obviously, we've got a lot going on when it comes yep. to visual imagery and of course those folklores that we know about um seeing the the girl walking with the missing toe it's totally big toe wonder if they're gonna make a soup out of it <laughs> probably not they'll probably like read about it but Tasty. it's like yeah <laughs> yeah throwing in that music too the somewhere over the uh -huh. rainbow just with the piano <sighs> slow it's, it's creepy menacing incredibly creepy yeah. and I, i'm wondering if it is going to be more of these kids experiencing all the different levels of terror. I think that's what it kind of looks like, is mm. that each time that they read these stories, these stories start to come to life, essentially, where they are. Well, even at that one point, the guy's like, you're next, or I'm next, we're or next. We're yeah, next. we're next. We're next. And where she's like talking to her dad and was like, I think I'm going to die. And yeah. stuff. I mean, it could be two different scenes, though, too, so we don't really know. But remember, don't you laugh as a hearse goes by, for you might be the next to die. I could do the whole thing beginning to end. That's yeah. how much I love that <laughs> book. Uh, but, yeah, I'm really hoping to see some of those... Uh, 
you know, those, those tales be told and elaborated and stretched out to the point where it does make it even more terrifying for a new generation of people watching it who maybe didn't get to read the book, but obviously go check out the book. Yeah, and I'm, I'm excited Guillermo del Toro is on, in this project because right. he's not going to glaze it over and make it cheesy like, you right. know, some of the Goosebumps movies have or the TV yeah. shows. It's, he does heart and he does scary and he does it uh, on that fine level of being too, too much. That's right. true too and I hope that, that uh, they also, like, you could see the, the imagery that Guillermo del Toro is very famous for, like all the costumes that they use, especially for the the creatures and the, the stories that they're going to tell. So hopefully when we watch it, you're like, oh yeah, this is very Guillermo del Toro style added to it. Uh, we should watch it in the D-Box seats. In the dark. But <laughs> I'm excited, we're excited to see scary stories to tell in the dark. So thank you so much for watching our reaction to the new trailer for Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. What did you guys think? Let us know in the comments below. I think I saw one of the kids wearing a clown outfit. Trailer. Oh, I know. I don't want to talk <laughs> about it. Ooh. But let us know anything that you saw. What are the stories that you think are going to be in this? Down in the comments below, let us know. You can also like and subscribe. And do the thing on our Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, Startup. All the social networking. Jin joins, you know where they are. Kicking the party, fuel the party, keep the party going on our Patreon. Gets us where we need to go. Check out the Rick Moran episodes of Better Late Than Never that we just did on our channel right here with Travis. We got something uh, marvelous coming up soon for our next episodes of Better Late Than Never. So stay tuned for those. So thank you guys so much and as always. Now it's time to say goodbye. This party is over. Bye. Bye. Bye.